that a school board member performs is wide-ranging, from making decisions about curriculum to creating and upholding board policies to managing fiscal responsibilities. The way that these responsibilities are prioritized could determine the academic success and achievement for Collier County. The members of the school board have the ability to influence the quality of education and impact the lives of students within their county. A candidate's morals and stance on pressing issues can determine what changes are going to be made if they are elected to the school board. Candidates that have held other positions of leadership or have been involved in the community have their accomplishments to speak for them. Each candidate has also published their own websites to share their bios, individual platforms, and ideas. In an effort to help facilitate Collier County voters making informed decisions, the WAVE has conducted interviews with the school board candidates discussing their goals for their time on the board, as well as new things they may bring to the table. The candidates were asked a standard set of questions ranging from their background, philosophy of education, and budgeting. Follow-up questions are only based on whether a member of the editorial board has a need for clarification. In the interests of non-bias and non-partisanship, the editorial board at The Wave has decided to present the raw, unedited interviews of each Collier County School Board candidate on our website. The candidates were made aware of this in our invitation to them. Elections have consequences, and voting is your right. If you are not 18, your voice can still be heard. Engage with your family and your neighbors. <sighs> that title is a little scary. Is education on life support? Was that Halen's article? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> look familiar. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> are you recording? Yes, I am. Well, if I had known, I would have worn better clothes or something. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> please. <laughs> you look great. <laughs> All right. Did you like the school? I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I've, awesome. been, I've been here before uh, several times. I came to the last performance, and um, that was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> amazing. I can't believe the voices of the. Were you in it? I was. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember what it was, but you were. Hmm. I forgot. <laughs> you were one of the sisters. I was yeah. one of the sisters. Yes. Okay. As long as like various other parts. Yeah. yeah. You were amazing. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you. <laughs> was anybody else in the show? No? Okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right. I picked you out. <laughs> so what do you what do you want to talk about? <clears throat> we can introduce ourselves. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, well uh, we're, we just have a standard set of questions that we've been asking every candidate. So, um, but yeah. Okay. Are you ready? <clears throat> ready. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> um, well, to start off, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for coming here today. We truly appreciate you taking the time to be here with us. Um, like I said, the purpose of these interviews is to inform voters and stakeholders on the importance of uh, in the role of education in the school board and to increase student involvement in education. Um, and to begin, we'd like to introduce ourselves as an editorial board. Mm -hmm. So, and then we will proceed with the interview. Okay. I'll start. I'm Jorge Rodriguez. I'm the editor in chief. I'm Sophia Lowry, and I'm the executive editor. I'm Madison Moore, and I'm the managing editor. I'm Helena Davis, and I'm the opinions editor. I'm Annabelle Fraser, and I'm the features editor. I'm Al Richardson, I'm the science editor. I'm Grant Terrell, I'm the web design editor. I'm Logan Ornell, and I'm the digital media editor. Mm -hmm. So, Tommy Barfield. <laughs> 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 I love this. Seeing you all just is amazing to me. Because <laughs> you can't predict what you know someone's going to look like or what what their path is. But to be involved in the newsletter is awesome. Thank you. I did that too in high school. Just awesome. saying. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, <laughs> first we'd like to discuss any background that you may have. So, um, is there any background experience that you have that qualifies you to become a school board member? I would say there's a few. Um, <laughs> boy, we moved to um, Collier in '89, and I started teaching at Tommy Barfield and the Gifted program at that time. 
and I was also <laughs> I also had to go to uh, Pine Ridge Middle School the same day, so I taught in the morning at Tommy Barfield, and then I had to drive to Pine Ridge every day. That was That's that was lot. that was interesting, yeah. And so then after Tommy Barfield, then I decided I was going to go to middle school because it was a challenge for me, mm -hmm. and I love a challenge. And so I was at middle school for several years, went to Oak Ridge, and was fortunate enough to win a golden apple. And then, what did I do after that? Oh my gosh. <clears throat> um, then I was an assistant principal at Golden Gate Elementary, and was the assistant principal of the year. And then I went to um, Tommy Barfield, where I was there for 14 years. Loved it, loved it. <laughs> and um, we were an A-graded school for 13 of those 14 years. So that's a little background there. Um, I also have pursued my education career um, full tilt. Um, I, I came with a BA and a master's degree from, master's was in uh, University of Wyoming, and then went, uh, applied to University of Miami, and went to my, through the doctoral program there, and uh, graduated with honors. And then, you know, it, it's such a commitment of the heart to education. And so then after I retired, and I didn't want to retire, but things happened. Um, after that, then I decided to run for school board because, you know, my heart's in education. And you, yeah. It's been there from the beginning. And I thought, well, you know, I think I can do some good for students and staff and parents and keep the communication going and, you know, just make our district even better. So, that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> Thank <laughs> Big you. nutshell. Thank you. We've reviewed your campaign materials. Could you tell us what best describes what you hope to accomplish on the board? Mm. I think my role on the board is to increase communication with all of our stakeholders. I think that's really important. We need to listen and we need to take advice and suggestions, weigh them against what we, what we know and think, and involve the students as much as we can. I know that Dr. Patton has been meeting with uh, student groups, which is uh, very important and we listen to staff and um, parents, and but I think the communication part is very important. The thing that we try to focus on also is student achievement. And so we're seeing a huge rise in student achievement, which is great. So we want to continue doing that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a specific reason that you're running for a seat or re-election on the school board? I'm running for re-election because I think we're off to a great start these four years. And we have a board that respects each other and listens. We don't carry grudges, you know, if you have a different opinion, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And I think, I believe, and I think I believe, no I don't. That I said that wrong. I believe that with the forward momentum that we have in the district and the respect that we have from the state and from most of the people in Collier, I think that we can keep going and we can be even better. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Are there any previous accomplishments of the board that you plan to build upon or make further contributions to? One of the main accomplishments is putting in place all of the supports that people need. 
and that that includes hiring more staff if it's necessary, making sure that uh, we are targeting the factors that increase achievement. We're also doing an amazing job with career and uh, careers for students before they ever leave high school. We have kids that have contracts um, signed, delivered, and then they, they, after they graduate, they are working in professions that really make a difference. And they choose those professions, you know, we're not cramming anything down their throats. But for example, uh, big engine uh, machines, you know, those huge, those huge things that they have and we have kids that have are, are on contracts and working in the fields, working on those engines now before they graduate. That's just one example. The other example is um, our students can take aeronautics and get their pilot's license before they graduate from high school. <laughs> you know, there's so many opportunities. Uh, I'll tell you another one that's in Immokalee. We partnered with a, uh, <clears throat> a building company, and the company had a section of land in Immokalee, which they donated. And so the kids, the students, the high school students, go over and they build houses. So they do all the electrical, all the plumbing, they do the drywall, they do awesome. the building, they do everything. And when they finish, the, oh, they're building, um, I think it's 12 houses. And I got to see three of them while I was visiting there. And they're amazing. They were just amazing houses. And so they're doing the floors, they're doing all the tile work and, and everything. And so before they're done in high school, boom. They're hired. Mm -hmm. Graduating with experience. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And I think it's great that we have the uh, the encouragement for kids to go to college. Mm -hmm. That's great, but it's not for everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we're giving our students opportunities that um, other school districts aren't doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So now that we've established your background, we're going to shift our attention towards schools. So in the last five years, there have been two major hurricanes and a pandemic. So how would you support the students and staff in the event of such a tragic crisis? Oh, man. That pandemic. Yeah. I'm not sure what you all did, but we tried to get every single student a computer so that they could either work at home virtually, totally virtually, or they could work <clears throat> with their teacher, which was partial virtual. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sorry. So the teachers planned and they had um, the curriculum. They just continued through it and they made up the time. And we had, our, our kids did really well. So we were um, excited about that. As far as other supports during the pandemic, we delivered not only delivered the computers and the hotspots to every single student, or if there were two students in the, in the home, they shared one, but it worked out well. Uh, let's see. We also partnered with the food service, and so we had meals delivered. They could come and pick them up, and they would pick up, they would drive up in their car, be presented with a, you know, a breakfast and lunch for all their kids. So we made sure that they had the things that they needed to continue their education. Mm -hmm. Did I cover the whole thing? I believe so. Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Please describe what you believe a perfect school would look like. Well, this is as close to perfect as, as, you, <laughs> as you can get. Thank you. It's Thank really you. an amazing building, and I think this is the third time I've toured it, and then, of course, gone to the performance, but 
it has an amazing vibe here. You know, it's small enough that you get to know everybody, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And you get to know the teachers and it you know, it's it feels good. Mm -hmm. You know, I go into all the schools if I can. We didn't visit much during the pandemic at all. And after um, Ian, we haven't been out to schools very much either. But I feel the same thing when I go into smaller schools. The larger schools, not so much, but there, there are good vibes, but they're not close-knit vibes, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So that's what I think about this school. Mm -hmm. Be a role model. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and how do you feel that schools should approach uh, very controversial topics like religion or politics? I think schools need to stay away from religion. <laughs> That's really a, um, a hot button. Politics, <sighs> that's a hot button issue too. People are right now very polarized and frankly, they're very nasty. We've been yelled at during school board meetings, threatened. We've, um, we've been told, you know, that I'll make sure you're not reelected, you know, those kinds of threats. We had to go from two officers in our school board meetings to three, to four, to five, just to try to keep people calm down and not violent. My hope is that the politics and the rhetoric and all of this has a chance to calm down. And I think by keeping the same people on the school board, we have a better chance of doing that because the others are um, somewhat radical in their views and disruptive. So you're not going to make much headway if you're, all you're doing is disrupting things. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to work together. Right. Thank you, bro. Thank you. You're yeah. welcome. Thank you. Um, how would you advocate to ensure that children uh, aren't forced into a one-size-fits-all kind of model? As far as where they go to school? Uh, and learning learning in, 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 in schools. Oh, okay. Well, we are really proud of the way we differentiate for students because there's opportunities to, you know, choose your classes, choose what you need, and we identify students that need extra support. And so they are given those freely by not not just by law but by your heart you know you want to see all of those students have success so whether it's a, a, a non-english speaking child and we have services for that we have services for ese we have services for hearing impaired you know we 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 have the supports for all of those things that make student success possible. Thank you. Thank you. Lastly, we just like to ask some questions regarding the budgeting in CCPS. So how do you think that the board should support like all schools in CCPS in regards to our safety and security? Well, for one thing, we've had a partnership with the Sheriff's Department for <clears throat> I can't remember how many years it is. It seems to me it was, it's been 30 years to have the um, youth relations deputies in all the schools. <clears throat> There's also a criteria for safety and they come around and I don't know if they come here or not. You probably have your own team that, that works on safety. We do drills we regularly a, yeah. with Mr. Okay. Yeah. We okay. have a school resource officer as well. Yes, mm -hmm. that's what I was talking about. Um, the officers 
go into schools when they're out on vacation and they do the drills and make sure that they know where everything is in the school. They have floor plans on their computers and their vehicles. Every school's floor plan so that they know exactly what to do in terms of safety, where they go in, and what they, you know, what procedures they have to take. In most of the schools, uh, well, in all of the, our public schools, the front doors are locked, you have the same thing here, and all the other doors, classroom doors, are locked. And so that started with CCPS, but it's become the norm now for for all the schools, yeah. which is good. Yeah. It's great. And we have um, people that are very, very interested in the mental health aspect of students in school. And so we have a lot of counselors and a lot of people that are listening and helping and being aware. That's a big thing. Thank you. Thank you. Do you think that is something to build on? Is the mental health support in schools? Do you think it's okay where it is, or do you think if we had the opportunity, it's something that we should improve? I think we do. We do need to improve. There's, there's kids that are so borderline that something could, you know, yeah. they could go over the edge, and I don't want to see that in our schools. I don't want to see it anywhere. Right. But we have to be more aware. And I think we become more aware as, as students and, and as um, administrators to listen and be cognizant of what people are saying and how they're acting. And then let someone know, let a professional know what's going on. That's my feeling. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. What experience do you have with complicated budgets? When you're given a budget for the district, what would be your process to determine if it's a good budget for the system? Well, the budget process is very, very involved. Before every single meeting, we get a binder about this thick. <laughs> and we have to go through it and look at what is being budgeted, what kind of things are going to be uh, remediated. There's a lot of budget that goes into the remediation at schools. When I say that, I mean like, you know, you have to repaint this school, or you have to change the air conditioners at this school, or you have to do this, and it, it's just by the hundreds, especially in a, in a big district of 60 plus schools. So <clears throat> we go through that, we ask questions, and then we get the question, the answers to those questions so that we can be comfortable with what the expenditures are. There's a lot of grants that we get that have to be monitored all the time. And those are sometimes million dollar grants. And that's some, not something that you can change around. You know, oh, I think I'll move it from this category over to here so that we can have a clothing allowance. No. <laughs> no, you can't do that. So there, there are, there's a lot of um, overseeing of the budget. We have between 70 and 100 audits a year. And those are going on, they're ongoing. And so I don't worry too much about how we're spending money because there's, there's a lockstep, you know, there's, you, you can't do that. You can't do that, but you can do this. We just received a grant from um, Governor DeSantis, came to Naples and gave us a grant for $5 million to open a new school out in Glades County that will allow students from the surrounding counties to come in for career and technical um, classes. So we're, you know, we're reaching out to other places and it will be run by Collier County because we have the experience. 
But I think those those particular things really help out as well with the budget. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what do you believe to be some of the main issues that are hurting teacher retention, and how would you plan to combat these issues? Good question. As a former teacher and being very close friends with so many people that are in the teaching field, I really ache for them. They are under such pressure right now, not only through COVID, that really took a toll on people because you just didn't know whether you were going to get it, whether you're going to die from it. You had to keep your students safe. You had, you know, it, it was just so tense and so wearing on everybody. So that, that was a big part of it. And then you roll that over <laughs> into the hurricane. And then, you know, you have a ton more stressors that are going on. What would I do? I would make sure that the mental health piece was in place, that were, there were supports and there was pressure taken off teachers. I think the pressure has increased. And it's increased because we're low, not low, low on staff, but we're missing staff. Mm -hmm. And so that means that other people have to pick up the slack, including you know that particular teacher who always who is has always felt stressed because of what they teach or their lack of training. Some of them have a ton of training, but they're getting pressured even more to get her done. You know, <laughs> who's that guy that always says that? The comedian, get her done. Uh, I don't remember. I I, yeah. <laughs> I think I know who you're talking about, but I don't yeah. remember. Yeah. All right. Well. I, uh, in, in addition, I think that we can do better things for uh, making training on their time, so that they don't have to take extra time mm -hmm. to do those things, and raise their salaries so that they can mm -hmm. stay in Collier mm -hmm. County. Yeah. We have. I don't know how many, 300 maybe, teachers that live in, live in Lee and commute all that, all that way. We need, them, we need them to be here. How do you plan to get the funds to raise teacher salaries? Uh, one of the things that, that, again, the governor is doing, which is a positive, is to give us more money. For teacher salaries we can't you know like I said you, you have these pots of money and you maybe you you can't take it out of that one no you can't take it out of that one it's all very programmed but I think um, he wants us the state of Florida to have teachers that are the high range of salaries instead of you know in the middle mm -hmm. so that's one thing and the other thing that we're looking into is trying to find affordable housing and incentives for people to put a down payment for a house, which is not outrageous because the down payment, the housing costs are ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't know how a beginning teacher could even think about finding a house at these prices here. So. We're looking into maybe building some affordable housing or partnering with a construction company so that <clears throat> we can have um, housing that makes sense for teachers. I know that some school districts have started building their own housing, which is an interesting concept. So, but we're looking into all of that. Yeah because we want the best mm -hmm. teachers. Right. Mm -hmm. And you guys have great teachers here. Yeah. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. Mm -hmm. May I ask, do you believe that the building of affordable housing could also be subjected to students who might need that as well? And the families that need it? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. I think um, if, if, if it came to pass that we had affordable housing, 
we would absolutely have some space for nurses and other in other professions to live there as well. I don't think that, I mean, I wouldn't want to live in a community that was all teachers. <laughs> I mean, you know, and I love teachers, but I love the diversity in my community. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what we're looking at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, I believe those are all the questions that we prepared for you. But is there anything else that you would like to add or anything that you feel that we missed? Not really. I think you had some really comprehensive questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, I think we hit on the main, the main things that we needed to talk about. I hope you have a better understanding. Well, am I the last one to go? We have one more. We have one more. Okay. Um, I think that if you've talked to the three of us that are on the board, you probably have some consistent consistency with our responses. And that's an important thing going yeah. forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you know there are people that are just anti-incumbents, and it's like, what? <laughs> what's your what's your rationale for that? I don't. Anyway. Thank you. Well, thank you. You're thank welcome. You very much. You're Appreciate most it. welcome. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. We can walk up if you like. Okay.